Um, so one of, the, one of the sort of experiments that, one of the experimental results, the unintended experimental results of the DAO failure was the hard fork of yes. Ethereum. Yes. So just in your view, given that there's sort of the, the chatter in the Bitcoin community around hard forking with unlimited and what's happening there, what lessons, what positive lessons and what other lessons were learned from, from the Ethereum hard fork? I mean, the hard fork was a fantastic learning opportunity. It uh, tempered discussion of hard fork in Bitcoin very strongly. Um, I said at the time, I think during the first week, that I thought that the hard fork had executed technically in a very successful way. And then, when ETC retargeted its difficulty and continued to go on, and then started getting listing in exchange, I was proven wrong. So technically, it had failed. Politically, it, it, technically it succeeded. Politically, it failed. It failed in a very big way, um, causing all kinds of problems and an eight to twelve month setback for Ethereum. That became a salient lesson for Bitcoin and for the potential damage, especially in a system that is twenty billion dollars and with much more contention. Um, as to what a contentious hard fork could do, and that was a very useful lesson. The question is, is that a lesson worth a billion dollars? Because that was the cost, right? So the cost of the fork was about a billion dollars. Um, that's not the kind of price you want to pay for an experiment. So if the rules in startups are fail fast, fail cheap, that was slow and damn expensive, right? <laughs> Um, not a good way to learn a lesson, but we did learn something from it. Um, and I, I, I've learned a few things, I think, and I'll continue learning as we see how it progresses. One is that um, all cryptocurrencies get one mulligan, right? <laughs> so a mulligan in golf is where you and then you say, "Can I do that again?" And you get one more, right? Once you get one, you get to try that shot again. Bitcoin got a mulligan. Right? It's like, oh, a block just mined 192 billion Bitcoin. Whoops! <laughs> Early enough, concentrated enough, Satoshi goes, that didn't happen. Run this code. <laughs> didn't happen. If you got a mulligan, the cost of that mulligan is that it put Vitalik in a position to make very difficult decisions. That is going to force a permanent handicap. Because Satoshi disappeared, but Vitalik, we know where he lives. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's a f terrible burden to put on one person, uh, and it will cause difficulties down the road. So I don't think that was worth paying the price. Um, and the lesson of the hard fork for other cryptocurrencies is that things can go much differently than you planned, and there will always be someone who, to their dying breath, will not. They're like, you will only take these coins from my cold, dead hands, right? <laughs> and as soon as you have classic, then you're going to have classic, classic, and classic light. Class you, you, you get all of these other tendencies to fragment. I don't think the story is over yet. So uh, you were talking about the Bitcoin Unlimited fork. Um, you probably missed the news today. Anybody else catch the news today? Yes. Mm, oops. Uh, so. <laughs> So a uh, bug was discovered in Bitcoin Unlimited, which is a remote exploit that allowed you to take down a Bitcoin Unlimited node with a single message. Pow! So someone went pow, 400 times and took down the entire Bitcoin Unlimited network in an afternoon. What's interesting is if this had happened, this happened now, and a lot of Bitcoin Unlimited people were quite upset about the possibility of someone exploiting this. Oh, they should not be upset. They should be very, very relieved. Because imagine what would have happened if someone conniving, malicious, or just sociopathic enough had decided to hold on to that and launched it twenty blocks into a contentious fork. You're twenty blocks ahead. Let's make a reorg. <laughs> Down goes the entire majority fork. And you have a big problem. I mean, that, that would have wiped out millions of dollars, um, both in rewards and in transactions, and caused a big disruption. So it's best to find these bugs early. Um, I think that was another lesson, which is that there are there are issues with quality of code, 
and quality of code is something that does not happen by having the best developers. If you depend on having the best developers, then you can't work in the real world. Because in the real world, developers come in a bell curve. Right? <laughs> and, and you want contributors. What you need is a QA process that takes that bell curve and produces quality code at the end of it. Right? Um, that way, you don't depend on the developers being superstars. You depend on a process that turns their code into super code, even if they're not superstars. Uh, that's a mature system, right? So what we saw here was a QA system that developed that delivered approximately 1,000 times the bugs for the amount of code written in the case of Bitcoin Unlimited compared to Core. How do you fix that? The problem is the way you fix that is you get 1,000 times better developers. Those don't exist, <laughs> right? A thousand times skill upgrade, not going to happen, right? So QA and process matters, uh, as does having a very large, diverse team, and, and that's another lesson that comes out from these contentious disagreements. In the end, the impact is minimal, and Bitcoin benefits. Um, one more bug squashed, everybody moves forward. Uh, so I think the bottom line is that. Ethereum has a fantastic opportunity to learn from all of the mistakes Bitcoin is making. And as of recently, Bitcoin had a lot of opportunities to learn from some of the mistakes Ethereum is making. Uh, and that's great. That's what an ecosystem does. Uh, and it will be good for all digital currencies. Uh, that's how we mature as an entire ecosystem, rather than fighting little internecine battles against each other. Because you know, if we win one of these little battles against each other, the banks are standing by to stomp on the whole space. All right. Thank you very much for coming today.